Hi friends and welcome back. I'm really excited today to kind of introduce and um, invite you to join me in kind of a fun little read along. There's no pressure. I just thought it'd be really fun. This is something I've wanted to do. Um, I want to take a month and celebrate two mods in my life. And what I mean by that is Lucy Maud Montgomery. She was often known as Maud. And uh, my new love within the last few years is Maud Hart Lovelace. And I was really privileged just recently to travel to Deep Valley, if you're familiar with the Betsy Tacy series, um, which is actually Mankato, Minnesota. And it was just such a lovely trip. I went with my husband. It was maybe a little chilly. I could have gone a little earlier in the year. But it was so fun to visit some of the different spots that are in the Betsy Tacy series and just see, visit her grave and see the house that they have um, restored to look similar to the photos in the book, which was how it was when the family lived there at a certain time. It's not all exactly the way it was, but it's really interesting. And uh, yeah, so... So this, uh, in December, I am going to celebrate these two mods with something I'm going to call Mod Myths, and I'm really excited. Um, yeah, and I hope it'll be just kind of gentle and light. I'm not expecting to finish all of these things, just dip into them, because there's so many other wonderful read-alongs. I know there's Cloak and Dagger Christmas, which I'm really excited about, because this year I've really enjoyed a lot of mysteries especially older classic mysteries or golden age type mysteries. Um, so yeah, um, I know there's so many things going on, but if you, if this sounds interesting to you, or if you want something kind of gentle, um, I'm sipping a gingerbread, um, oat milk latte and it's delicious. So join in. And so this is just, I have little five little prompts and I'll share a few things that I, um, might read with those prompts. So my first prompt is to just start a series by either of these authors. And if you know of any other mods, it'd be really fun to put them below in the comments. Um, it's not a super common name, I don't think, anymore. Um, off the top of my head, I'd have to like search, but off the top of the head, I don't know of any other authors with mod. Um, but yeah, so the first prompt would be to start a series or read a series or continue a series. Um, I will be, I'll talk about my selections here in a minute. The second prompt is to read a standalone by one of these or a short story by one of these authors. Um, the third prompt is to read something like nonfiction by them or you could read um, like their journals or um, a biography about them. So that wouldn't be written by them, but about them. Um, if anybody knows of a good, a really solid biography about Maud Hart Lovelace, I would love to know. Um, and then the fourth one is to read some poetry. I don't, I feel like I thought I saw that Maud had written, po Maud Hart Lovelace had written poetry, but now I'm not sure. I'm not seeing it like, in an initial Google search, so maybe she didn't. I don't know. I know Lucy Maud Montgomery did. So, um, and then five is to read a uh, Christmas selection by the author. Um, so yeah. So my 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 idea is to read. Earlier this year, I had read the Chronicles of Avonlea, and these are like just like little vignettes about different people and in Avonlea and the Chronicles of Avonlea I really enjoyed and so I have this on my shelf which is the further Chronicles of Avonlea and so I'm excited to try this. Um, I also really enjoyed, I've read this before, Christmas with Anne and other holiday stories so this is just holiday stories pulled out of some of her other fiction, um, Lucy Maud Montgomery's fiction and it's just sweet and lovely, peaceful. Um, I have this collection of short stories which is akin to Anne Tales of Other orf Orphans, so. And then first, I really want to read the Pat series. I've started this a few times. Actually, I have my bookmark from before. Uh, I think the only, the reason that I've had a struggle with this one is the, their, their housekeeper in this series has a very strong, I want to say it's like Welsh or Scottish accent. I can't remember exactly. And 
I feel like this one, if you can find an audio, that would be awesome. I don't know. I haven't even looked if there's an audio. Um, but that has been a little bit of a struggle. I thought this was really cute. It follows um, a little girl named Patricia Gardner. She loves her home, Silverbush, so much. And she's slightly spoiled. Um, but then uh, the arrival of a sibling throws her little world into a tiz. So it was really sweet, of course, with just the beautiful nature writing and just, just she writes children so well, the sensitivity of children and just really, really sweet. But I haven't ever finished this one and there's a second one. And as an aside, and I think it was, I'm trying to think, on my, in my, for my 15th anniversary, I was able to travel to Prince Edward Island and I visited the home of some of Lucy Moy Montgomery's relatives, which was the model for Silverbush. And right by there is this lake, and that's the model for the, uh, the Lake of Shining Waters. And so it just, I, rem I vividly, I have kind of a bad memory, but I vividly remember visiting Silverbush, and it was just so beautiful. And they had a display of some different items from some of the stories. And it was just really interesting. The blue chest, if anybody knows about that, and the, uh, the, the wedding dress from the spurned bride, and a lot of first editions of all of her books are in there, and it was just lovely. So I'm excited. I also had this biography about her. I've read a few things about her, um, but I haven't read this one. The Wheel of Things, a biography of Ella Montgomery by Molly Gillen. So this is sitting on my shelf. Um, I have her poetry collection and I do really enjoy this one. So maybe I'll dip into this. And this is an option too if I just feel overwhelmed by all the wonderful uh, December reading. I really want to get into volume three of her journals. I so enjoy the first two volumes. I would say the second one was a lot sad, more sad because World War I had began and she just was so broken up about all of her friends and family and just the, you know, Canada entered into the war and she just really followed it and they had news, you know, it was newspapers so you're waiting to find out what happened and she's just really torn up about it. So I would say her, uh, the second uh, volume of Diaries is really sad and she does do a lot of war effort stuff and it's just really interesting though to get a Canadian woman's perspective about World War I. Um, so if that sounds interesting to you, but I have this third one. This is 1921 to 1929. So that's interesting and her outfit kind of looks flapperish. She has a shorter skirts and her shoes are so cute. She's got Mary Janes on and I love her hat. It's a really cute hat. So that is some of my ideas for Lucy Ma Montgomery. As far as uh, Maud Hart Lovelace, I definitely want to continue the series. I've been holding off. I didn't do very good on my trip to Mankato. I did start. Betsy was a junior and so I've gotten about halfway. I was able to read some of this out loud to my husband as we traveled and he really enjoyed it. This is really funny. It's because they're juniors in high school. Betsy Tacey and Tib comes back. And they're just, she's kind of a novelty um, in the high school. And they're just boy crazy. And Betsy opens out this book making some resolutions for her junior year. And I just love it. She rows out at the camp her and her family uh, stay at in the summer and she makes resolutions in her journal and I just loved it and then uh, Julia is at college her first year of college and she is all agog with sororities which it's just really interesting learning about them at this time you know and so that's really cute so Betsy and Tacey and Tim decide to start their own sorority in high school and so far it's been really funny and so I'm enjoying it. And I have I have also on my shelf, I have the next one, Betsy and Joe. I can't wait to get to this and find out what happens. Um, and then I believe I have two more um, after this. And I don't own those yet, so I'm slowly, I need to get those in my stock. 
I also have this one on my shelf, and I believe this is a historical fiction by her. And so I'm really curious to read something that's not Betsy, Casey, and Ted by her. I did read, and this could be a Christmas um, selection, I did read The Trees Kneel at Christmas um, by her, which is a short children's story. And it was really lovely. It was following, um, well, she called them Syrian, but I think they were um, uh, from Libya, I think. Um, I have to look again but it was in Brooklyn. And so it was very interesting, just some of uh, their traditions and these little children and all the food and the family. And the little girl wants to go to um, Central Park on Christmas Eve. And it's really sweet. I really enjoyed it. It did take me just a tad to get into it. Um, at first I was like, it was a lot of characters because they live together kind of in, a, in their family unit, you know, with like, grandparents and you know and so it took me a little bit so persevere if you read that one because it then it's really sweet and then I also have the Anne Christmas collection so that's a suggestion for I don't know if there's I haven't looked recently if there's any other Anne ones but I really highly recommend that one so if you if this feels fun if there no pressure um, I would love to have you join me and put down what you might do um, or, you know, uh, use the hashtag and join on your booktube or bookstagram or something. It'd be fun to have other people. If you want to, like, buddy read any of these with me, that would be really fun, too. Like on Voxer or something. Um, that would be really fun. So, I hope you're um, enjoying these last, this last little bit of um, autumn reading. And just, I'm still kind of in my autumn, November reading and uh, getting ready for American Thanksgiving. And so, but I'm definitely starting to get the Christmas, uh, the Christmas vibes. I put up one little stocking here for you. <laughs> That's the extent of my Christmas decorations. Although I did break my rule and start listening to Christmas music before American Thanksgiving. So what can you say? So thank you. And I hope to come back again soon with another video. Talk to you later. Bye.